Here's one last question that I want to cover in my summer prophecy series this year. Revelation 19 speaks of a great marriage supper of the Lamb, or Jesus Christ. If this supper is celebrating a marriage, then who is Jesus marrying? Who is the bride of Christ that we read about in Scripture, and when does this marriage take place? So before diving in, I want to say that I know that this is a debated topic and a lot of people disagree with me on this, but I think if you really endeavor to be biblical about the issue, you'll have to agree with me at least to some extent. That being said, there's no way that I can comprehensively cover this topic in one 10-minute video. So understand that what I'm providing here is just a conversation starter to wet your whistle, if you will. So continue the conversation in the comments or on the Bible Explained Facebook page. Anyway, I think most people assume that the Bride of Christ is comprised of believers of the church because Paul told the Corinthians that he espoused them to one husband, that he may present them to Christ, and he wrote in Ephesians saying that husbands are to love their wives in the same manner as Christ loves the church. But don't forget that Paul also wrote in 1 Corinthians and in Colossians saying that the church is the body of Christ. I think this means that the church is to be living as Christ lived when he was present on earth and continuing his ministry of seeking the lost. In this way, we are the body of Christ because he indwells us, empowers us, and we are to fulfill his will, similar to your body which is controlled by the will of your mind. What am I saying? Well, in Ephesians, we find that the husband is also to love his wife as he loves his own flesh. In the same way, Christ loves the church because it is his body. Now, you might think that I'm arguing that the church is not the bride of Christ, but that wouldn't be entirely accurate. I think that if we look at scripture objectively, we find that Christians in the church are certainly part of this bride of Christ. But it would be difficult to argue that the Bible teaches consistently that we are the only group that is part of the Bride of Christ. Here's why. Remember the tribulation passage of Matthew 24? Check out my video on proof of the pre-trib rapture to see my analysis of this passage. It is clearly addressed to the nation of Israel, which Romans 11 says is distinctly different from the church. But in Matthew, after Christ described the events of the 70th week of Daniel and the great tribulation of the final three and a half years, he continued in chapter 25 to speak of this wedding, still addressing the Jewish people, saying, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. These virgins are said to go out to meet the bridegroom, a clear picture of Christ, but some of them were not ready when he came, and they missed the marriage. What's even more interesting is that it says that at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. With this in mind, check out the description of the marriage supper in Revelation 19. John writes, And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And verse 9 says, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. It seems obvious then that these virgins in Matthew 25, which we can reasonably assume are a picture of Jews during the time of the tribulation, are part of the Bride of Christ, if they are ready. Now, you might think that just because the virgins are the Jews and they are called to the marriage doesn't mean that they are part of the Bride of Christ. But notice that Revelation 19 says that it is the Bride who has made herself ready. And the virgins are specifically allowed into the wedding only if they are ready. It all fits too perfectly to be dismissed. So, I would say that the virgins are Jews who will be supernaturally protected during the last part of the tribulation, but not all of them will necessarily be believers in Jesus as the Messiah. 
Matthew 24 speaks of a sign of the Son of Man appearing in heaven. And chapter 25 says that there is a call to go out and meet the bridegroom. Whatever this looks or sounds like, apparently, just before the return of Christ, in judgment, there will be an obvious call to the Jews to go out and meet Christ as he comes. Those who are believers in Jesus will be ready to do so, but those who are not will not be studying scripture and will therefore not recognize this call and won't be ready for Jesus to come. It makes sense, right? This view also fits perfectly with Revelation 19, which describes a supper after the return of Christ. This supper is a dinner of the birds and fowls of the heaven, which are feasting on the dead bodies of those who had gathered to fight against Jesus at the Battle of Armageddon. It seems that, while these are dead and birds are feasting on their bodies, the Lord will instead be feasting in victory with his bride at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Now, I know most people who agree with me about the pre-tribulation rapture hold the view that the marriage supper takes place in heaven immediately following the rapture, and that the church is the only group of people that comprises the bride of Christ. But I just don't see any proof for this, and it definitely doesn't seem consistent with everything else that we see in scripture about this marriage supper. I mean, Revelation 19 has the call to the marriage immediately before the return of Christ, and that fits perfectly with what is said to the Jews in Matthew 25. Remember, it is not only the church that has a special relationship with Jesus as the Messiah. Jews have always been seeking the coming of the Messiah. And though many do not recognize that Jesus is the Messiah, it doesn't mean that believing Jews of the Old Testament should necessarily be loved by Christ in a different way. Remember that Jesus did not just die to bring salvation to New Testament believers. He died for those in the Old Testament as well. Or else David and Moses and Abraham would not be going to heaven. They were sinners too. It seems to me that all saints from all ages are part of this bride of Christ. Besides, Revelation 19 puts the call to meet the bridegroom for the marriage supper right before Jesus, the bridegroom, returns to earth. So there's really no evidence to suggest that the marriage supper takes place in heaven immediately after the rapture seven years before Christ returns to earth. So this is all fine and good in theory, and it definitely seems to fit, but do we have any solid evidence that the bride is more than just the church? Well, first of all, we don't have any solid evidence that the bride is only the church. But I do have an ace in the hole when it comes to this topic, and I've been saving it for the end. In Revelation chapter 21, John writes of a grand city called the New Jerusalem that will descend out of the brand new heaven above the brand new earth that God will create after the millennial reign of Christ. This seems to be the place that Jesus spoke of when he said, I go to prepare a place for you. In verse 9, this city is given a different name when an angel tells John that he will show him the city, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. This city is a picture of the bride herself, and no doubt is built to be inhabited by those who comprise the bride of Christ. It's beyond exciting to think that we will dwell in this city where the Lord himself lives and reigns. But then, as John is shown the city called the bride, he learns that there are twelve gates to this city and on each gate is a name, the names of the twelve tribes of Israel. What's more is he also sees twelve names on the twelve foundation stones of the city, and these are the names of the twelve apostles. The picture here is obvious. The city is a picture of the bride, and those who comprise the bride are represented by the twelve tribes of Israel speaking of believers in the Old Testament before Christ, and the twelve apostles, speaking of believers in the New Testament, 
after the coming of Christ. This is just the clear meaning of what we are given in Scripture, and it seems pretty obvious that all believers from all ages are part of the Bride of Christ. Now, I know we're only scratching the surface of this issue here, but these passages seem pretty clear, and they seem to all agree together. What do you think? Are the Old Testament saints part of the Bride of Christ? Do we have any proof that the Church is the Bride of Christ exclusively? Continue the conversation by sharing your thoughts in the comments below. Now, before I go, I want to sincerely thank you for watching this video. If you like this content, don't forget to hit subscribe to support the channel and to see more content like this. I really appreciate it. Also, I want to remind you that the whole Bible is ultimately about one thing, the redemption of mankind by Jesus Christ. You see, the Bible teaches that all men are sinners and that no sinner can have eternal life with God in heaven because we must pay for our sins for eternity in hell. That's the bad news. But the good news is that Jesus died to pay the penalty for our sin on the cross. Since our sin has been paid for by Christ, all that is left for you to do is to accept that gift by faith. If you've never accepted the gift of God by faith, won't you do that today? Leave a comment or send me a message and I'll be happy to talk to you more about having your sins forgiven by Jesus Christ.